Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast from Hype. This is episode 91. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building, making your I don't even know how many times appearance, but you bought company with you this time. She finally came. Introduce yourself to the audience. Hey guys, just being Mimi from Life Be Life and Podcast. Thanks for having me today, guys. You already know who it is. Your favorite coach's favorite coach, Coach Nye. You know what I mean? Back in the building. Did he try to not say it? Did he try <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. No, I'm not going to say it. You know you have to be the one to say it. Meg now in the building. Nutmeg <laughs> Shots out to my man Splash Charles. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I try to hold try. off on all the AKAs they done gave me. Yeah, he's going to try to act like he's company. You know what I'm saying? All right, you please. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I'm saying my man's first live show got my man is paid talent now. He's a professional. Facts. <laughs> All right, let's hit the rundown now, y'all. Custom Hustle. Custom Hustle World on Instagram is Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Custom T-shirts, jerseys, jackets, uh, sweatsuits. We can customize and get your logo on something that's going to cost you a little extra, but that's cool. It's, we'll make that happen for you. The jackets are all custom. They're one of one unless you order four. And the jerseys are the same thing. You know what I'm saying? You design them, pick the names, numbers, colors, all that. Football, basketball, baseball, hockey, however you like them, we will make them happen. Kids sizes available and everything also. H2H Cleaning at H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. Roofing, plumbing, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, flooring, carpeting. We make it all happen over there at H2H Cleaning. And if you make it worth my while, I will slide wherever you need us to slide. Um, Copy that. E-Block, we need to get you a wristband, girl. You know what I'm saying? That's why we need to get you out of one of these live shows. I need some. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, E-Block Radio Network, every Monday, 2 o'clock on the E-Block Radio Network. GFT Radio Network, 2 o'clock every Tuesday. Wednesdays, 216 to blend, 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m., 12.30 12.30 every Thursday, WTNUPhilly.com. Then we go to I Say Podcast Radio Network every Friday, 10 a.m. THC Media on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Sunday, still wide open looking to fill that slot. Now, episode 91. Got my folks in the building. This one is titled, Is Anything Sacred? So here's how we got to Is Anything Sacred. As you know, I'm a man of many hustles, as you just heard the rundown. Also, the How to Hustle seminars can still be purchased, you know what I'm saying? Just DM me and we can make that happen. You can buy all five sessions or you can get them one at a time, however you want to make that happen. Um, Copy that. My man and I came up with that one. So I'm at one of my, you know, several hustles. And we have married woman and married man who are both cheating on their spouses with each other. Now married man has married woman's credit card and is now charging shit to her card. And now husband finds out, shows up to the job to whip his ass. I didn't know none of this was going on. Beat him up. Because um, you know what I'm saying? I'm just over here passing out wristbands and handling my situation. Um, oh, God. So this got me to thinking about like, well, damn, everybody's just acting like, you know, this is just what happens. This is cool. This is, you know what I'm saying, what's to be expected these days. So this is how I got to my folks over at the Life Be Life and Podcast. You know what I'm saying? Love these people. They get give you great content over there at Life Be Life. And I plagiarize and steal shit from them all the time. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Blueprint, they throw, baby. They throw a little something out there, and I say, hmm, that's not a bad joint right there. <laughs> um, so this is why I wanted to get them on to talk about this. These are both two married individuals, you know what I'm saying? So right, this is how we got here, y'all. Is anything sacred anymore? Are there any relationships or anything that's like off limits? Is there anything that is like I hold this close to the vest, or is everything just open season? We're not gentlemen over here at the Hot Hosts Podcast. We're gonna start with nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I need some time. I'm about to say she used to be on the start off with her. Oh, man. I ain't going to lie to you, man. It's the wild, wild west out here, man. People who have thick lines and will not cross them. We are the dinosaurs. We are the last of the dying breed. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, yes, it's absolutely stuff that's still sacred. Um, but people running around here like it ain't, bro. Like, 
no picks. It's just whatever makes you happy, that whole whatever makes you happy notion. Or, uh, you know what I mean? You only live once, yada, 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 nonsense that people rolling with these days. I mean. Since you brought that up, I really hear when people say that whatever religion that you believe in, we all have, there's an afterlife. I my so when people say, well, you only live once. No, you only get to do dumb shit once. Okay. <laughs> There's no room for dumb shit if you believe in that. I mean, everybody doesn't believe in, you know, yeah. the afterlife. But you know, people believe be convenient, bro. Like, it'd be people who tell you they, you know, they, they Muslim. It'd be people tell you they Christian. Well, all that should be convenient for them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like you said, we, we know how it's supposed to go when you believe in these spiritual notions. But it's like people cherry pick so it's like you you christian but you talk about some only live once like you said that don't that literally ate the bag contradicts your belief the mat. right it mean, contradicts your belief people are willing to put their beliefs to the side all the time now and it's, this it's is funny. why i always tell people hold up Mish. this is why i always tell people i'm not one of those type of muslims where i learn things and know things to gear my argument with you like if you learn things to argue with somebody, that's all you'll ever get out of those situations, whether you're any religion. But most people will be like, oh, you Muslim, so you like, I'm super Muslim. I know everything. Like, <laughs> nah, I ain't that far. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I don't learn things so that I can argue with you about, oh, you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that. It's like, I mean, if that's not what you want, copy. You know what I'm saying? But don't present yourself as being on this. And then when I say, all right, well, you know, this don't go with that. You know what I'm saying? But go ahead, Big Mish. Try to get you on for a minute, girl. Let's go. <laughs> I feel like people do the whole picking and choosing based on what works for them in that moment. I mean, you know, you think sacred is supposed to have a spiritual, you know, connotation to it. But really, it's like, to me, sacred is something precious, period. So like relationships with my families, friends, and sometimes some of my coworkers, but there are fine lines between all of those, you know, sacred relationships and situations with people. And I think folks just do like kind of Nari says, they, you only live once YOLO, what works for me. But at the end of the day, is it worth it? Is crossing those lines worth it for you? Um, I mean, cause going back to the story, okay. You sleeping with your friend, your coworker, your work wife, your work husband, cool. But why are you going as far as to let them in to your life on such a personal level to where they have your credit card information, social security number, a home address? Like, so okay. Up, this was the part I forgot. Crazy. After the husband finds out. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a little bit more. The husband Who finds out like two weeks later. Shorty's trying to get some cash to go get a telly so she can go slide down with me, man. But I can't put it on the credit card because now the niggas looking at the receipts. Hey, yo. So he, so you telling me husband found nah. her, showed her to the job to whoop all ass, and she's still sliding. Hey, man. They in love. Take it to the yeah. house. That's, that's beyond like them just yeah. with one another. They are they're beyond that's, entangled. They're they're beyond yeah. being entangled. Like and, and it's crazy because I feel like when people get to that I told level, you I got one for you, bye. Like they need to just go ahead and call it a wrap with their significant others because when you get to that level of disrespect or cheating, whatever you want to call it, your the level in the relationship, the friendship, the situationship. Yeah, just go ahead and say, look, Shadi, I'm done with you. I'm doing too much over here. You know, I know, we know this ain't working out. Why hold on to the relationship? Because it's like you said, it's no longer sacred. You done already stepped out. He done already found out. You already ruined someone else's relationship along with yours. So what's the purpose of staying in that? For what? What it what what are you getting out of that? So here's what um, my whole thing with any of these, because I always try to say, like, let's not just focus on the one relationship, or a man-woman relationship, or any of those different things. Put it on all things. I don't think anything these days is sacred. At all. Try never to generalize and just speak, like, for myself, but as a whole. Just look at your news feed. 
and you can see all the business of everybody's relationships and dynamics. It's about to be like, you know, we get into the end of the year, so you already know now this, uh, I hate the term holiday season because they try to be politically correct with the holiday season and the day after Christmas. Now that the holidays are over, y'all just was talking about Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, I mean, New Year, right. all of that. Um, so like once you get to the end of the year, you know what I'm saying? And everybody's spending a little more time with their families and all of that. But then you got this one who says, oh, I don't fuck with them bitches. I don't talk to them nut ass niggas. You talk about your brother, your cousin, your mom, your dad. So like now you could scroll through your news feed and see like none of this shit ain't sacred. Like you cussing your mom out on the internet, like what tip are we on? Your dad is a bitch ass nigga, what tip are we on? <laughs> you don't fuck yeah. with your kids. What tip are we on? I mean, like, my is, but that's another story. Yeah. What you say? I said my dad. Like, that shit don't make sense. Like, that's the whole thing. Like, I'm saying, like, nothing these days is sacred. Nothing is, like, off limits. Niggas have put all of their business out about any and everything. Uh -huh. And I don't understand why you would ever do that. Like, if we're talking like we're doing right now, where this is a business situation and we trying to make something happen out of this, yeah, we could talk a little bit about your business and what's going on and this and that. would be vague in a situation. But, like, you're never going to go to my page and see... Me and my wife had this argument. We talked about this, and this went on with my kids. I don't Never. fuck with this cousin or this brother. Like, that Never. shit is retarded to me. Yeah, not ever going to happen. Uh, we did an episode talking about, like, the social media norms and how folks feel like. I'm sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She's glossing. See, this is you saying. Nah, this is what you thought. It was. <laughs> she's new. She's new. We who is we that did an episode? I'm sorry. Find that episode. Uh, my bro. Co uh, co host for the Life Be Life and podcast did an episode on social media norms Copy and how that. it is ruining our. We started out talking about the youth, but it's just ruining us as a people, as a whole, as a society. I feel like folks don't feel complete and whole if they can't put something on the internet for someone to approve of, comment on, like, share, or whatever. It's almost like Again, going back to the nothing is sacred, you really feel like you have to have some type of approval stamp or, you know, co-sign from folks for things to be okay. Why? Like, why, why do we need to do that? Why is all your business on the internet? I mean, you got, and it is funny because it's like a flip-flop. You were speaking about the holidays and how, you know, you can scroll through and see all of this. I know motherfuckers that cuss each other out all year long. They hate their baby daddy. They hate their baby mama. But soon as mm -hmm. come, these niggas are matching pajamas. Hey. <laughs> then after the new year, every year. Bitch, every year. So it's like. Well, this year, hold up now. This year, we can get y'all in matching custom hustle Christmas jerseys. You know I love it. We have the Christmas <laughs> baseball oh, joints it. available for purchase right now, you get them now. You probably can get them in time for you, you to be ready. You good, good. If you go in front, you might as well front in that custom hustle. Exactly. Hey, man. You know, look, be exclusive. Look, mm -hmm. no, don't front in flannel. Come <laughs> hey. We got custom hey. pants for you, baby. Don't be in them itchy yeah, ass flannel. Man. We got these Santa Claus like papers that. right there for you. <laughs> I like that. Don't front in the flannel. Yeah, I mean, we got custom fits for you. How about that? I just helped you with your little logo. That's hard. <laughs> so, that's you know, hard. I don't know. I, I, I just I don't understand it though. It's it's just really crazy because what is it that makes people feel like crossing those lines and boundaries is worth it though? That's my question. Like saying for those watching hey. Hey. I love it. He was quick. Hey. 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 Let's he was, go. He was quick with that. Let's I love it. Go, I, right? I love it. Hey nah, you know what I'm saying? Paid talent, baby. Paid talent. Got to be right. <laughs> love it. I love it. Love it. I love it. But um yeah man um by the way that was episode 10 like be life in virtual reality if y'all want to go back and check it out um but to uh, to answer to answer Misha's question it's really that we've become more of a selfish society than ever before the 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 me 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 of it all you know what I'm saying like it used to be at least it used to be me and mine but now it's not even really me and mine it's me over everything so mm. You know, because if it was me and mine, you think about it, especially 
a situation like that where y'all might have kids or something, yeah. you thinking about, damn, I can't make some move. I mean, I know she's fine or I know he's fine. I mean, I see him clocking me and I'm clocking him, but this is going to have to be, you know, a fantasy I had in my head that I got to let go of because the risk is too great. But now it's just like, nah, man, like, you look like you could do something with me. I look like I could do something with them, so I'm going to go ahead and take that risk. And then it's like, well, damn, like you said, like the ball coming up to try to square up, even that situation can end very badly because, yeah, he coming to beat man's up, but not everybody fighting fair these days. You know what I'm saying? True. So you going up to beat some better up because, you know what I mean, he clapping your wife's cheeks. So you going to, you know what I mean, handle him next thing you know, he draw on you and, and just be whole situation ruined. Now, she's short a husband. You know what I'm saying? His wife sure the husband because he going to jail. Like I said, if y'all got kids, somebody lost a father. Yeah. Were two fathers removed from the kids' lives because one in jail and one in the grave? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and then the wife might want pay back too. More broken homes, more kids affected, more bad society. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People don't be thinking about collateral damage. Yeah, the risk ain't worth the reward in my opinion so, for stuff like that. See, this is why I always yeah. tell people um, things being sacred. My page has no pictures of my kids. My page has no pictures of my... I have one picture of my wife because I did the marriage series and it was like I asked everybody else for pictures like from their wedding or like mm-hmm. of them and their spouse. So, all right, if I ask you to do it, I got to do it too. Yeah. But right. that is a sacred situation. I got a private page. They got a couple hundred people on there. Yes. Everybody doesn't have access to photos of my wife and kids. Yeah. That's a situation that's not for the public. That's why I always tell people, man, my wife ain't for the public. One set of hard eyes under one of these pictures and we got issues. Okay. <laughs> I, look, um, I don't blame you. I take my page something private. That, something that you said about that episode 10 of the Life Be Life and Podcast. Um, I don't even think it's just that... Uh, the kids with the social media situation it's us it's our generation like man we dropped the ball so much with our generation like now i said we became just so selfish and so me centric and so me focused that we forgot that we had these fucking kids we forgot that we were supposed to raise them we act just like we didn't come in and blow up our mom's life, our dad's lives. And now that these kids came in and blew up our lives, it was just like, well, you ain't fucking up my life because I got to live my life. Right. I only get one life, all of that type shit. Then you start getting into all of that type shit. And now you turn all of that into just the neglect of the kids and turning that into posting shit about your sister, your cousin, your brother, and this, that, or whatever, where it's like, what are you doing? What is your focus? What is the purpose of this shit? What are you doing? What are you ultimately getting out of this shit? I feel like it's the validation. People want validation that they know that they are wrong in. People know they in situations doing shit, saying shit, acting on shit, that they're dead ass wrong, but they know there is some crazy nut ass motherfucker out here, like y'all like to say, that's going to agree with the bullshit that they doing and it's going to co-sign that and stamp that on the internet. And you know, you know I, got, I like to say like motherfuckers know that they can't be touched on the internet, so they say all kind of shit. Now, you know, you know better. Like, you you know you wouldn't talk to your mama like that. You know you wouldn't talk to your brother like that. You know you wouldn't talk to your sister Some like that in person. Some do, though. Like, I mean, I talk shit, shit in person. I don't talk shit on the internet. I talk shit in person. So That's what I'm up? saying. Like, so, some niggas will cross them lines, though. Like, you supposed to, you, you know when you were around your grandma, it ain't fuck this, fuck that, this, that. It ain't that type of situation around your grandma. So, right. niggas, that's how they play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, again, that ain't a, it's not a sacred situation. I don't give a fuck how old I ever am. I never come to my mom's and it's fuck this, that, whatever. Yeah, we ain't, cool. this is what I tell my daughter, like me and my mom ain't cool. We are not friends. <laughs> she is my mom. Yeah. There's a boundary there. Yo, There's I stay telling my goddaughter don't cross. that. Yeah. Like, I stay telling my goddaughter that. And it's like, I was telling Nye, um, because her and his son, you know, when they used they used to come visit, they would play a lot. I'm like, like seeing the difference in how they grew up. Like she li- literally thinks that I'm one of her little friends. And then here lately, because she's coming into her teenage years, she's about to be 16. You know, she'll say things about her mom. And I'm like, hold up, stop right there. Who the fuck is you talking to? What? And I was like, you're not about to sit on this phone and say, your mother don't want your smoke with you. And this, that, and that third. Little girl, I'll reach through this phone to choke you. Because at the end of the day, I'm your godmother. 
but I'm still an adult. Like, you're not about to talk that adult shit to me about your mother like you an adult. Because if you don't like the way she operate, move out. Emancipate yourself. Go take care of your goddamn self. So, yeah, I just, I, I don't be understanding these kids and how they have grown beyond their age so swiftly. And they think it's cool to talk to people like they on their level. And I'm like, until you can pay some bills around here. I don't want to hear you say shit. Like all of them situations, like I said, they happen though when we don't have those lines. Like I said, there's a line mm -hmm. me and my mom that they ain't crossing. Yeah. There's like a it's a, goes back to what the joint is. There's a sacred situation there that I understand. I tell people all the time when niggas just say like, I will never disrespect my name because I got the name from my dad. And dead mm -hmm. or alive, he is not to be disrespected. Right. So yeah. there's a line there that I understand. We ain't going there. Yeah. That's what my kids understand. We ain't going there with daddy. My cousins understand. We don't go there with him. Like, I ain't that type of guy because there's a line there. If we all lost that, though, as a collective, where there's certain things that you don't do and you don't cross these things to men make these just, like you said, now my goddaughter is calling me to cuss, cuss out her mom. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah. But this is the type of shit. If they keep seeing us do that type of shit, then we can't say, do as I say, not as I do. But this is what you're doing all fucking day. All they do is watch what you do, how you move, how you react. And if you give off a certain thing, then that's what they're going to take. If you got the cousin or the aunt or whoever who's giving off that certain thing, that's what they're going to gravitate to. But yeah. you got to also always make sure that we keep a line of... You don't come here when this is going on because you ain't to be here. But that's why I always, again, I said this last week on the episode, bad old heads. Bad old heads is how all of this happens. When you don't understand that you are now the person of influence on the little cousin, brother, yeah. neighbor, whomever it is, that's how we get these fucked up situations. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's, it's also a big impact with the spaces outside of our home, which is why, like you said, it got to be important. Like, this this gotta be like our home gotta be the the last line of defense, bro. Like because it's so many whack stuff going on in these other spaces that they bring back home. And if you don't like check it like immediately, you know what I'm saying? That's what happens. And they get to thinking they're gonna get away with it. You know, you thinking, oh well, you know, I know some people do the quote unquote gentle parenting. I know some people trying to be more understanding because our kids have dealt with trauma that we haven't dealt with. And I could understand all that, but you still not fitting across me. Like, we we not playing that. Like, I'm like Gary Payton. You ain't fitting across me, okay? It stops here. It stops here, okay? You gonna get fouled trying to crack me. I'm gonna send you to the I'm gonna send you to the floor, not to the line. I, I ain't going for that. <laughs> You touch two things. <laughs> I play my brother. One time. I play Boar one time in the league. Boar, me and Boar, I sold on the on the wing. Okay, Boar's way more athletic, faster, and all of that. I crumbled Boar in the air. <laughs> this is my brother. Okay, he's catching this. So if he's catching this. What do you think you're catching? Anybody can get it. And Anybody. Like said, me and my sister. Shout out to Rel. Um. We just had this conversation the other day where she's trying to get my niece to lay down. And she's like, I'm trying the gentle approach to get her to lay down and take this nap. I said, I'm a firm believer in the aggressive approach of lay your ass down. The fuck down. Sleep. <laughs> it's nap time. Okay? The gentle approach, we've been on the phone for 20 minutes. She's still up and not listening to that shit. I told yeah. her, girl, you got to get the aggressive approach going. Okay? Her ass could already been 20 minutes into this nap. Now, now you fucking around. I'm about to find out that she ain't going to go to sleep. I don't know. But going back to the situation with my goddaughter, for me, I don't think it's gentle parenting because my husband used to be like, I guess because I grew up like me and my sister were tomboys. And then it was like my brother and my cousin who's kind of raised with me like my brother. And we, you know, hung out with the boys. We played football, baseball, basketball. We was all in it. So he was like, you really don't know how to parent girls. So I guess when she came along, it wasn't gentle. But I guess I was trying to give her that relationship that I didn't have with my mom for real. Like, you know, doing the girly things and letting her have an open and honest conversation and, you know, talk freely and speak freely, going back to what you were saying about all of the traumas and stuff that they have experienced. But it's just kind of like, girl, uh, listen, we can have a conversation, but you're not going to be disrespectful. So it's just kind of like, I don't believe in a gentle parenting thing because I tell my nephew all the time, I will cave your chest in. Keep playing with me. I will knock your head <laughs> off your shoulders. 
Like, the, I will whoop your ass, like all of them. My sister, she gentle parents my Open um, and honest conversations is cool. But yeah, again, but you can't be there's a line. Either. Yeah, and I told there's her. A way there's a line. That's what I, that's there's what a I way for her. you to tell me and say something to me with it being respectful or disrespectful. Yeah. There's a way for her to explain to you, like, all right, you, I kind of think I'm ready to, to cross this line with the young mm. boy without just telling you I want some dick. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a way for us to have these conversations. It's cool for you to have a safe space, like you said. I wish I had this, so now I'm trying to do that for you. Because we all try to right. do that. They take advantage. You just, but you always got to remember, like, that the kids are just not all of They're not a product of all of my mistakes, and let me live through them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I try to provide this for you, but if it's not something that you gravitating towards, then all right, I can't push it on you. I got to like, pull it back. Yeah. yeah, it's cool for us to have a safe space to have these honest conversations because you wish that you had somebody to have them conversations yep. with when you were 16. Right. But like you said, there's there has to be the line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? God, I remember to telling that read. for us to communicate. I done screamed on her too many times in the last couple of months, which I've never had to do. And it's like, I know you dealing with stuff over there with your mom and you can't really converse with her. And you feel you can be comfortable with me. But no, like at the end of the day, your mom is still an adult. She's on the same lines that I'm on. Like she's still like a sister to me. So in essence, like you can't come talking that shit about her to me. And it's just the way you say it. Like you can say, I'm really upset with my mom. I just don't like the way she's acting. And really I'm about to have an attitude with her. But all of that shit, like you talking to one of your little friends, I'm not with that. Like that to me, that you bitch gonna line. tell me. Oh, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. there's so many words. <laughs> she was just like, you know, I'm like, yo, Marley, like, you know, and then the whole, I just don't understand why I can't. I, and I like literally was like, cause you fucking can't. Like, and I, she got quiet. And I was like, oh, what? You not used to them, you not used to them words coming out of my mouth? I was like, yeah, you're not gonna sit on this phone and talk to me crazy. Like, I have boundaries. There's lines drawn in the sand. And since you want to act like they're invisible, I'm about to make them real clear for you because I'm not doing that. And you know, certain things she was putting on Instagram, I was like, take it down. Take take it down right now. It's just not appropriate. Like you talking about throwing it back, throwing it back for who? You say you're a virgin. So what you what you talking about? So I just think of people do a lot of things on the internet and in general, in real life, for shock value, for approval. People starting to try to live out them money. internet personas, though, now. Yes. Yes. Exactly. And if you read these comments on a lot of these, like, you know, posts, and it's like people kind of approving, doing shit that they know, just it ain't right. It's it's just not what's up. That's just not the thing to do. So they like, oh, well, if they saying it's cool to do on the internet, then it's cool to do in real life. Not at all. You because you have a like in, situation in real life. I got four. Yeah, it is. I was about to say. Telling me that this is it. <laughs> exactly. And they like, but it's just like in real life, where you got that section of clowns that add you on to do stuff that probably they ain't willing to do, ain't fit to do. So they want to see you crash out, or they want to see if you gonna get away with it before they try it. You know what I'm saying? So it's always in people putting them batteries and people back. Whether we talking about kids or whether we talking about adults. Is somebody putting a battery in your back to go do some stuff that you know don't make no sense, yeah. but you want to see how it plays out. So you're going to go ahead and keep feeding them and feeding them. And that's crazy, but people do it all the time, and they talk bad about the person when it goes wrong. But the fuck <laughs> like, like, some people ain't never been told that that shit was wrong. That's <laughs> true, too. That's yeah, true, But that also too. goes back to us dropping the ball in that situation for never breaking down the shit that this is normal. And this is cool. <laughs> like yeah. some people, if you only grew up in chaos, then you think, "Oh, scream, holler, let's argue with that's each okay. other, fuck you, cuss you out." That's how you show love. What that's you mean? That's not how you show love. Therapy. Go get some help if you think that's normal. But and now, also, and see, me just let us right where we was about to go <laughs> to talk about the life be life and podcast, where Mish openly talks about how she goes and see her therapist. The so this is what I need to know though from Nah. What's the wildest shit that Misha ever said on the podcast? Whether we're going to go with two kings, you want to go with two kings, or... I'm about to say it's probably... I'm about to say you got two podcasts, work. Yeah, I'm about to say you got two podcasts, work. Y'all making me feel bad. Oh, man. What's the wildest shit she just said? She said LeBron was the best ever or anything goofy like that? No. No. She ain't said nothing goofy, but she done said some crazy stuff like... She didn't had she didn't have some crazy stories. I, I I think there was a crazy Marley story. 
there was a crazy art story, a couple of crazy art stories. I ain't gonna lie. There's a couple of crazy art stories, and it's crazy because you know, for those who, who haven't listened to the podcast, either two kings two one five or like be life and like me and Mish are you know family through my brother Art. So you know, what I mean, that's her husband, and that's my brother. So you know, what I'm saying when she tells some of those stories, it's kind of like, mm, I didn't know he was that goofy. I didn't know he's that crazy because like when you meet him, he's really like this straight laced L seven type boy, like. He cool, but he's an L seven. I ain't gonna hold you. Straight up, square. that's one thing. Straight I up, square. You learn a lot about niggas on these podcasts. <laughs> Real rap. When she tell you some of these stories about like just how crazy he be sometimes, it's hilarious. But I think one of the craziest jokes we had was um, uh, Clash of the Titans. Man, we had her cousin Tracy on with us. I think that just just those conversations as far as like. Arguments that we have in between spouses and whatnot, it, it, it they got crazy. Some of the stuff yeah. she was bringing up, bro. We ended up going for four, four, four hours. hours. Yeah, we went. We, four that thing took four total day. hours because we took two hours and broke them all. Yeah, it was two two hour sessions and broke them all into an hour. Yeah, we call that a series in the business. That is you basically know what yeah, 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 it definitely was. Series. It was definitely a series. <laughs> What's the wildest shit Nodden said? Oh, man. What's hey, the wild, what? Come on. What did Nutmeg now give you now? <laughs> <laughs> mm, see, I have to be honest. Nye is kind of reserved sometimes. Like, he only gets hype when it comes to people saying dumb shit out their mouth that he has to respond to. But he's typically very reserved as far as his commentary and conversation. And we, I mean, we get it. Like sometimes when you, we were talking about this before we started, you got to worry about other people's feelings because when you already got hurt feelings, you ain't trying to hurt them feelings no more. And I say, I don't give a shit. Like, because I'm just way too honest. So he had to pull me back, but not. I don't think he's really ever said anything to me that was like, "Wow, that was very shock value worthy." Okay, I give you a different one. What's the thing that Nas said that made you think on the podcast? He challenged you with this one. Mm. I know my man Nas paid talent. That's a good question. He's That's my man question. out here. Thought, my man out here giving out jewels. You know what I'm saying? I will say it was the episode, I can't remember the number, it was on uh, 2 Kings 215, and we were talking about standards Shout and out to Ace. Yeah, that's my Shout dad. Shout out to Ace. Ace, I see that E, that's who he be. Um, and we were talking about standards and expectations, and um, and I'll never forget because Keish, our sponsor for... Um, Keish with the cakes. Shout out to Keish. Keish with the cakes. 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 Yes. Yeah, she's the trained chef. Oh, oh, definitely say, yo, who was the chick with the fat ass? I was talking about. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, shout out to her. She's our sponsor for Life Be Life and Podcast. But on, uh, and she she's had, also um, sponsored sponsor the How to Hustle Live Show Part 2. Hey. <laughs> See, she getting up there. She um, came through and sold out. You know what I'm saying? Whole she did. So straight out. Wow. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking that about. That was episode so six, by the way. Oh, see, he be having all the numbers down. I just be remembering the title. Paid talent, girl, my man. Is, <laughs> I got to get on his level. I remember the yeah. titles. He remember the numbers. Um, we were talking about um, how people's expectations over time change. And this is what I was saying. I got into the conversation about why I don't have kids. And he asked me, if you know he want kids and you don't, why are you staying? And I was just like, yeah, let me think about that. And I've literally been having that conversation in therapy for the last six to eight months, maybe longer, actually, probably going on a year if we want to be honest about it. And um, and it's funny, him and I had a conversation not that long ago. He was like, I feel like I'm holding you up. And I was like, 
I'm kind of holding you up because I done told you I ain't really trying to have no kids. And, and it, every in the back of my head, nah, why you staying? What makes you stay? Why you just don't leave? And it's just like, so I would say that's the one thing he asked me that I constantly always think about. And like that question always pops in my head. Like I hear his voice, what's, what's making you stay? And it's like, no, he's not advocating. Let me read the like, context. It's more, or less, it's more or less trying to get her to see what's keeping her there, not why she don't leave. So when y'all hear this, don't make it. I don't want y'all to take it like a player hating on my bro. No. We're trying to get him to step out the door. He, he definitely does not yeah. want to leave. Yeah. My, you know, uh, transparency moment. My therapist made me write a whole four page letter about why I want to leave my marriage. And did you close it with day, a kiss? Oh uh, no, because I, <laughs> it's it's I haven't even given it to him. Like I finished. She asked me to write this letter last June when we had a major argument. And I, I want to say maybe that's when we talked about it, like maybe either before or after that. I can't remember now, but, um, and she was like, I need you to write a letter. And it took me six months to write this letter. I sent it to her like right before Christmas. And she was like, okay, I approve of this letter. And I was like, okay, so when am I supposed to give it to him? She was like, that's up to you. When I tell you, if this man didn't become yeah, a perfect I angel, <laughs> I wouldn't, advi- I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise time. passing that one off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I did. <laughs> it, it hasn't been passed off. And yeah, I, I'm pass, I don't, I'm pass, I don't know if it will one. be. Um, you know, I, I like to tell people we live a separate but equal lifestyle right now. But um, I also tell people we're probably better than we've ever been. But literally, every time uh, I think about the reasons why, like if something goes wrong or things go extremely bad or, you know, extremely great. We having good days. I'm like, that question that I ask me always pops in my head. Is this why you're staying? What makes you stay? Do you really want to like leave? So that would probably be the question that Nye has asked me that makes me think about it. So this is um this is why I wanted to have y'all on. Like I said, when I listen to y'all, I always get shit from y'all. I always tell the guests when I look down at the phone and I start texting in the phone, you said something that triggered the episode. His, <laughs> that got a topic. That's why I told you I plagiarize from these people all the time. <laughs> had a live plagiarism hey, on the podcast. <laughs> I'll let y'all know about that one off mic. But um, high form of flattery, imitation. I, I mean, but see, when yeah. I'm when, as I'm a serial plagiarist, I always give those <laughs> to the individual who I've plagiarized. I won't say, about say it's not plagiarism if you cite in your source, baby. Exactly. It's recycling. See, it's recycling. I'm I'm going to always say, shots out to that, 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 I'm not just going to flat steal your joint and then say, man, I'm going to say, nah, you always put us on high price. Oh, bro, you just sampling. That's all you just sampling. Everybody so go to Costco and sample on a Saturday. It's all good. We be clearing the record. We be clearing it. Yo, you know, I never caught one of them little joints like. Hey, I think BJ's had like some trail mix or some shit one day when I was in there. And I'm like, I don't even want this shit. I got, yeah, I can go get my own mixed nuts. Get to the good <laughs> shit. Yeah. Get to the good Where's shit. Where's the spicy sausage nuggets or something like that? <laughs> where the crab dip at, nigga? Like, where the mix? Oh, what the fuck? Where them cheesesteak rolls or something like that? <laughs> Before we wrap this one up, this is something new that I'm doing. When you okay. hear. When you hear my name, when you hear hype, what is it that you think of? Mm, I'm gonna put the spell on. I'm, I'm gonna go first. I'll go first if if Mish ain't ready. You ready? I'm ready. Hard go ahead, working, you got it. hard working man. Like I ain't never seen nobody have so many hustles and literally promote them effortlessly, flawlessly, and like literally draw you in. Like hard working hustle. Like that's what I think when I hear your name. Copy that. Uh, for my me, man, I think make it. my man who came up with the hashtag mm-hmm. hype taught me. So, yeah, man, I think make it happen. Every time I hear hype names, make it happen. Whether it's connecting two people from a separate situation to make something happen, whether it's like you said, his own hustles making something happen. Like I ain't always looking out for somebody some way. If he ain't got it, he knows somebody else who got it. You know what I'm saying? Like. He, he, he's, he's, you know me, I'm always making sports analogies. He's that dude who know how to get his own buckets and you know how to set up his teammates too, you know what I'm saying? And he know how to put on a show. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's the all-star making it happen. The utility player, baby. This is why I he's the all-star making it happen. 
Hey, nah, it's funny you said that because I always tell niggas, man, I'm a ball dominated guard. I can't. I <laughs> you can't, one point. Yeah, I got to have it at the top of the screen, and I'll tell you, yo, come on, <laughs> give me the pick. Are we going to run a triangle this time? I'm going to ISO this one. Yeah. I'm going to always put you in a position to win. But once I drop this dime, I give you the great bounce pass. If you mix this layup, don't look at me. Yeah. That's <laughs> <what I'm doing. laughs> but, uh, I appreciate y'all saying that. I appreciate y'all coming on. That is episode 91 of the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.